this is this is my black hole i hate coming in the kitchen because this sink drives me mad i can if the tap drips it will send me i don't know why i don't know why but if there's a stain there then i've got to bleach it and clean it and polish it and then i've got to hoover it because there's lint on there these are my anti-back wipes there's about there's about 90 we have one of these a day wow one of those a day plus there's a pack of 50 in the bathroom so it's like 150 a day so rather than buy a loaf i would buy a packet of these Leslie lives in Bridgend, but she says her OCD is trapping her in her home. She lives with her daughter Tuesday. She too has OCD. She too feels trapped. Their condition is so severe that just letting our cameras into film required that the crew and kit were clean. Mine is purely, um, well not purely, but my, my number one OCD is germs, whereas my mum's is and hers is just bleaching everything and being a minim minimalist. Mine is germs, mine is washing my hands. Um, I don't like to be touched, I don't like touching other things, I don't like touching money. I don't like going out and touching cash points or traffic light buttons or uh, anything like that. I try to avoid all contact with other people. Okay, so this is my room. I've not slept in my bed for years now, I don't know how, how long exactly, but it's been a good couple of years because I can't bear to crease the sheets. So I've not been in it, so my mum doesn't sleep in her bed, she sleeps downstairs on the sofa, so I sleep in her bed. So this bed just gets hoovered. <laughs> Tuesday doesn't know what it's like to live without her OCD. Her mum, Leslie, does. Before the OCD took over, she used to work in a hotel as a cleaner. What would you now if tell your younger self? I don't know. Just be happy and grab every minute. Be happy every day. Just do. Cleaning's not important. Cleaning's not important. Just live up because life is too short. Here I am at 60. I'm basically housebound and as miserable as hell. Yeah. She'd probably be a happy little girl if I wasn't like this. And I'd have friends. I'd be able to go partying, I could still dance, you know, I could still go dancing and nightclubs without a fear of being dirty, you know. Mm. Yeah, happier days there. Mm. I fix it. Leslie and Tuesday have had treatments such as cognitive behavioural therapy, psychiatry sessions and hypnotherapy. The Welsh Government says it's committed to improving access to psychological therapies, but Leslie and Tuesday say treatments they've had have failed and getting help takes too long. This is so out of control, you want to hurt yourself. You cry all the time. Well, I do, she does. We, it's just consume. We're saying, please help, please help us. And we keep going to these people and then they put you on a waiting list 32 weeks. 32 weeks then they send you a letter saying if you still want to carry on with the treatment you'll have to wait another 42 weeks but ocd is treatable we see people with very very severe ocd dr anna smith heads up a team in london that treats those severe cases and so they're not getting i really strongly believe that people with ocd can have really great outcomes um and you know live the lives that they wish, symptom free, um, able to follow their kind of hopes and dreams. However, they do need the right kind of treatment and actually often that's quite a specialist treatment. Meanwhile, Leslie and Tuesday are waiting for the right treatment for them, hoping it'll work. James Crichton-Smith, ITV News, Bridgend. Well, earlier I spoke to Dr Lynn Drummond, who's head of OCD services at a hospital in London. I asked her if OCD is curable. OCD is definitely treatable. People can definitely get better, and I see many people with, with diseases at all stages getting better. Obviously, when it comes to getting the correct treatment, obviously the earlier you can do it in the, in the course, the less disruption it, it is to your life. 
Um, so for example, many people may actually start with the condition in childhood and actually if you can treat it effectively then, they may have minimal interruption with their life thereafter. Um, if you get people older, I mean, I've had people that are in their 60s or even 70s, and it's still treatable then, it's just that they've had a longer period of uh, going with, out being able to engage in life fully. And uh, what treatments are available? Does it vary around the country? The two uh, evidence-based treatments for OCD are um, psychological treatment which is called exposure and response prevention which in a nutshell means uh, getting the person gradually and their own time and with them in control to face up to the things that they fear. The second group of treatment are um, a specific type of tablet of, of medication known as serotonin reuptake inhibiting drugs and both of these treatments are actually very effective. Um, on each attempt, over 60% of people will improve and get better. If you then find that one treatment doesn't, it's always worth trying another. So even with the serotonin reuptake inhibiting drugs, if one doesn't work after three or four months, you can switch to another. Similarly, it's always worth having another trial at psychological therapy. People joke about saying, oh, I'm a bit OCD about yeah. things, but we're talking about something very different here. What should people do if they think they are seeing extraordinary behaviours, in, 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 even in children, maybe? OCD itself is when it starts to interfere with you achieving your life aims and goals when it starts to prevent you doing the things that you want to do and it becomes an end in itself. Um, so I think that people need to recognise it for there. They don't need to be worried that they have odd quirks mm. or put things in certain orders unless it's really taking over their life. Okay, Dr Drummond, thank you very much indeed.